Hello, Antioch. I know we're navigating a pretty difficult and challenging season right now, and so we're trying to find different and creative ways to stay connected, even though we're at a distance. Uh, one of those ways that we'd like to do that is creating a weekly devotional, which we'll call Antioch Devos. And each week we'll come to you with some things to think about and some ideas from the scriptures to, to ponder. And this is the first one that we're going to do, in fact. And what we like to do to stay connected is not only to share it weekly on the things that we're learning from the Bible, but we also want to collectively, even though we're not physically together, we actually can read through different books of the Bible together. So what we're going to start each week, starting this Wednesday, which is today, and then through the next Wednesday till the next devotional, I like to ask you to take some time to read through the book of Ephesians. So collectively, our entire church will be reading through the book of Ephesians, which includes parents with your children at home, obviously, uh, find some time to take a break from playing video games or streaming movies or whatever it is you're doing to, to uh, spend time, and maybe read through the book of Ephesians together with your kids. But I'd also like to ask you as we do that, if you would be willing so we can stay connected to use uh, the platform that Facebook provides for us, which is to post your insights, the things the Lord speaks to you about what you're learning from the book of Ephesians. And when you post, just simply hashtag it and use the hashtag Antioch Devos. And when you do that at the end of your post, people can search that or click on that and they can find everything that we're compiling in terms of what God's saying to us as we read through the Bible. So this week, we're gonna read through the book of Ephesians. But today, just briefly, I wanna share with you some insights I feel like the Lord's given me just personally and think for our church over the last couple of days, just really briefly. And that is that we all know that we're in a season where we desperately need the wisdom of God. Uh, we're in a very chaotic and difficult time, but we need God to speak. We need to hear him because we need his wisdom over our wisdom. And in the life of David, it's really interesting. Uh, David obviously was somebody that God used, but David was a broken person. But there, there are stories in David's life that indicate some really powerful points about the way he listened to God in his life for wisdom and, and the outcome of his life. In fact, there are seven times in the Old Testament where this phrase is used that it says, David inquired of the Lord. And that meant that David prayed, that David listened, that David asked the Lord, what should I do? And then the Lord answered accordingly. And the result was always something that was good for David. So just a few of those, maybe before I'd like to highlight in 1 Samuel 23, it's interesting so that, that David is faced with his enemies, once again, the Philistines. And he asked the Lord, he inquires of the Lord, should I, should I engage in battle? And the Lord says, yes. And the outcome of that battle was victory, which is something as a theme in David's life. Then you get to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Some other enemies named the Amalekites, they actually attack uh, David's camp while he and his men are away and they steal and they take everything, including wives and children. And so it says, David inquired of the Lord to ask, what should I do? And the Lord said, pursue the Amalekites. And so David pursued the Amalekites. And as a result, they were able to recapture and retake everything that was lost. It actually says not one thing was missing. So it ended out well for, for David again, because he inquired of the Lord. Second Samuel chapter two, after the, after the death of Saul, David seeks the Lord and inquires of the Lord once again, what he should do. Should he go to the towns of Israel and allow people to install him as king. And the Lord says, yes. And the result is obviously David becomes the king of Israel. And then finally, you'll find a story in, in 1 Samuel 5, excuse me, 2 Samuel 5 and uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 14, where once again, David is faced with the Philistines. Uh, they, are, they are advancing on Israel. And so he goes to the Lord and he inquires, should we, should we fight? And the Lord says, yes, you should fight. And the result is again, victory. So you can see that David looked for God's wisdom in all these different circumstances. And every time the Lord gave him the answer he needed to bring success and victory. But there is one story in the Bible from David's life where it says he didn't inquire of the Lord, but it actually uses a different phrase. And that's this phrase. It says that David thought to himself or David pondered in his heart. So instead of inquiring of the Lord, he was thinking for himself, devising his own plan. What should I do in this situation? And that actually you, we can find in 1 Samuel 27. And that is when David is in fear of Saul. And so instead of inquiring of the Lord, what should I do with my fear? What should I do with this situation? It says he thought to himself and the outcome for David was his, this decision. He decided to take he and his men and go and live with the Philistines, their enemies, as a way to hide from Saul. And if you read through the story and, and what happens in the subsequent chapters, it doesn't turn out well for David at all. 
because in this moment, he didn't ask for God's wisdom. He relied on his own. And similar for us today, I think we all face this challenge. In times of fear, what do we default to? To human wisdom. What should we do? How do we strategize? How do we make the right decision? But the one thing that has to be the key ingredient for us at this time is we have to inquire of the Lord. We have to ask the Lord, what do you want us to do in this situation? It's much like the true identity event that we had where Jamie Winship says this. We ask the Lord, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to do? And if we do that in the face of fear, we will find the Lord giving answers to difficult situations. Because all of us, we've all done something where we first thought, this sounds like a good idea, only to discover after we do it, it was a bad idea. Can you think of one or two or 10 or 100 of those incidents in our lives? All of us have them. I'll tell you one of many in my life. When we were living up in Oregon, I am born and raised in California, lived in pretty mild climates most of my life, moved to Oregon where it actually gets below freezing quite often throughout the year. And when we first moved there, I didn't understand the way the seasons worked and that things like grass doesn't grow when it's below freezing. In fact, it kind of goes dormant and you don't have to water it, you just let it sit and then when it thaws out, then you deal with it. Well, I didn't know that. And so the first three or four weeks we were in our house in Oregon, I, we had gone a stretch, surprisingly, without any rain. And so I began looking at my lawn and I thought, it looks like it's dying. It looks like it needs, needs water. And so one morning I decided, even though my sprinklers are off, I was gonna turn my sprinklers on. Now, of course, the temperature that morning was around 28 degrees, which is four degrees below freezing. So what do you think happened when you turn on the sprinklers when it's below freezing? Sure enough, my sidewalk, my driveway, my walkway up to my front door all became an ice rink. And of course, all of my Oregonian neighbors in the, in the neighborhood came out to watch the stupid Californian who was watering his grass when it was below freezing. Thought it was a good idea, turned out to be a really stupid idea. I think all of us have those. And that's why it's so important for us to rely on the wisdom of God. And one of the things I've been doing, especially the last week, is I've been going back to a couple passages in James that remind us about the wisdom of God. So listen to what James chapter 1, verse 5 says this. It says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. So God says, If you don't know what to do, ask me, seek me, do what David did, inquire of me. And then James goes on when you get to chapter 3 of James, and he actually starts to talk about what this wisdom looks like, where he says this in James chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. He says, but if you are selfish and have bitter jealousy in your hearts, do not brag. You're bragging as a lie that hides the truth. That kind of wisdom does not come from God, but from the world. It is not spiritual. It is from the devil. Where jealousy and selfishness are, there will be confusion and every kind of evil. Does it sound similar to what we're experiencing right now? All kinds of confusion. People being selfish. Verse 17 says, but the wisdom that comes from God is first of all pure, then peaceful, gentle and easy to please. This wisdom always is always ready to help those who are troubled and do good for others. It is always fair and honest. People who work for peace in a peaceful way plant a good crop of living right or right living. So what God is saying is if you seek my wisdom in life, the decisions you make will lead to right living, which will be right for you and right for those around you. So let me close with, with this story. Many of you obviously have heard this story before, but there are those times in my life where I can look back and say, hey, you know what? I did it right there. I inquired of the Lord. I sought the Lord and he gave me the answer. One of those times is when Kim and I were, we were dating and we'd been dating for a little over a year. And I had to know, I was the kind of the person, I, I need to have things settled in my mind. And so I had to know after a year of dating, is Kim the one for me? Is she the one I'm going to marry? Is she the one that's going to be with me the rest of my life? Am I going to make that kind of commitment? I had to know. And so my idea at the time was we needed to take a break from dating. We needed to, to separate for a period of time so I could seek the Lord and hear his voice. So I told Kim one day that for the next three weeks, we're not going to see each other. We're not going to date each other. We're, I just need to take a break because I need to pray and fast and hear from the Lord, which is a very spiritual reality. Now for Kim, she wasn't really happy with that decision, but she honored it and she respected it. And so that first week and I spent some extended amount of time just seeking the Lord and fasting and praying. And within three days, the Lord gave me a clear answer. Very clear. Yes, Kim is the one. She's the one that you're supposed to marry, the one that I have for you. And, and so I said, wonderful. So I got my answer in three days in. Well, that next Monday, I went back to school. And, and in my classes, a number of classes, I end up sitting next to Kim. And so I announced to her that the Lord spoke to me. And, and I know that you're going to be the one so we can start dating again. 
Well, in true form, the way my wife functions, and she's a straight shooter, she looks at me and she says, oh, no. She said, you said we're going to break up for three weeks. We're going to stay broken up for three weeks. So for the next three weeks, I had to sit next to her in class almost every day. But I couldn't talk to her because she wouldn't let me to until the end of the three weeks, and then we could get back together. But I'll tell you, it was one of the best decisions of my life, not because I made that decision for myself, but because I knew that I sought the Lord, I inquired the Lord, and He gave me wisdom and insight that gave me peace. And the result was, I have had the joy of being married to Kim for 28 years, going on 29 this year, amazing woman that God gave me as a gift in my life that He honored the decision I made because it was His decision for me. So I wanna encourage you, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of everything that's going on right now, take time to stop and pray and listen to what God is saying because when God speaks, He removes fear. When God speaks, He brings peace. When we listen to Him, He gives us the right answer so that we live right. So just a couple things in a close that I wanted you to be reminded of. Again, each week we're going to read through a book of the Bible or portions of the book of the Bible together. So this week, I want to encourage you from now until next Wednesday, read through the book of Ephesians. Maybe if you're a fast reader, read through it multiple times. Then go on Facebook and post your insights and the things that the Lord's speaking to you. And remember to hashtag it with the hashtag Antioch Devos. And then everyone can see your comments and what God's saying together. So again, I want to encourage you, let's not live in fear. Let's seek the wisdom of the Lord so that we can live peaceful, right lives with Him and with all those around us as we navigate this difficult season. God bless you.